Thank you, Eric, for the introduction. And I also want to thank the organizers for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, cardiac markers in this um, session. I come from Helsinki, Helsinki University Hospital, and here you see a few pictures of the new hospital buildings in the hospital campus area. And one of the buildings uh, in the corner of the right uh, is, uh, is the new laboratory building that we have in the area. Laboratories have analyzed cardiac markers for maybe 10, 15 years troponin I and troponin T, uh, and now we are uh, measuring high sensitive troponin I and troponin T. We have also measured natriuretic peptides, uh, B and B and NT pro B and B. But as you all know, there are issues of standardization and harmonization in these methods. There is a recent publication that studied uh, different troponin forms in the blood of acute myocardial infarction patients. And this might be a next step for uh, in developing new, more specific, AMI-specific uh, assays. This study shows that troponin I assays specific to the uh, 23 to 126 uh, amino acid region of the troponin I molecule detect all troponin complexes. But most interesting uh, uh, finding was that mixed troponin I, troponin C assay that detects all troponin complexes may be a very promising one for the future uh, uh, assay development. There have been a lot of publication and discussion also on the uh, uh, decision limits for the troponins. We had, there have been uh, a lot of papers uh, on, on the sex-specific uh, clinical decision limits with the development of high-sensitive uh, uh, troponin assays. And there's a systematic review on these studies which shows that the, actually the overall uh, female-specific 99th percentile of upper reference limit uh, in these studies is actually much lower than uh, reported in the package insert of the manufacturers and which are the uh, 22 to 30 nanograms per liter for troponin I and, and 13 to 25 nanograms per liter for troponin T. Uh, however, the overall uh, 99th percentile upper reference limit for, for troponins uh, in these studies uh, are coincide much better with the uh, package insert information of, of the manufacturers. There are uh, markers of heart failure, and as I already mentioned, the uh, markers of hemodynamic alterations like B-type natriuretic peptide and N-terminal pro B-type natriuretic peptide we have been uh, measuring already for, for many years. And there's a new marker in this category that is mid-regional pro-atrial natriuretic peptide. There are also other markers that have been studied, uh, like ca markers for cardiac fibrosis and hypertrophy, like uh, soluble ST2, galactin-3, and so on. And there are mar uh, markers of myocardial damage, like high sensitive methods for troponin T and troponin I, and also the inflammation markers, like C-reactive protein. Also, copeptin has been investigated a lot as a heart failure marker, and it is the C-terminal part of arginine vasopressin prohormone. It is involved in the multiple ca cardiovascular and renal pathways and functions. Collectin-3 is a 30 kilodalton lectin family protein that is secreted by activated cardiac macrophages. High-sensitive troponin-D assays has made it uh, possible to detect low levels of circulating troponin T in blood. And uh, with this development, uh, it has been found that uh, troponin T was elevated in heart failure patients. Mid-region uh, pro-ADMP is a stable fragment of adrenomedulin, uh, and it, is, it has a vasodilatory effect. Mid-region pro-ANP is a fragmentation of uh, N terminal pro A and B, and it is more stable in, in circulation than A and B itself. 
And finally, the ST2 is a member of interleukin-1 receptor family, and it, it is marker of my, myocardial overload. There's a recent publication that shows the importance of these car bi cardiac biomarkers in heart failure diagnosis outcomes, uh, therapy guidance, and additional benefit in, in the population level. And it shows that the all uh, first markers, uh, BNP and NT pro BNP, have benefit in uh, all these categories in heart failure diagnosis, heart failure outcomes, as well as heart failure therapy guidance and risk prediction at the population level. However, the other markers have benefit mainly in the heart failure related outcomes. There's a meta-analysis uh, on the diagnosis value of novel biomarkers to heart failure and there are a lot of studies that have been gone through and, and the overall diagnosis of accuracy of uh, diagnostic accuracy of copeptin, galactin-3, high sensitive troponin, uh, mid-region pro-ANP and STT was actually found uh, relatively good. But however, the mid-region pro-ADNP was found to have poor capacity and need to be con uh, to confirm or exclude heart failure. Thus, the uh, study group uh, concludes that the further multicenter controlled randomized clinical trials should be conducted to confirm these findings still. Copectin, uh, which is the quantity marker of endogenous stress, it has been found to, and studied more in, in connection with the heart failure, but the, it has been found also to have modest accuracy for uh, acute myocardial infarction. It has been also introduced as a, a part of the dual uh, marker strategy uh, together with the troponins. And this dual marker strategy increases accuracy and diagnostic accuracy, and it also increases negative predictive value of troponin alone for AMI. IFCC has a committee of clinical applications of cardiac uh, biomarkers, and this uh, group has done an enormous work, a job, by collecting all the data of all the existing uh, methods for uh, troponins, uh, and, and natriuretic peptides. They have uh, received all the information for the manufacturers and these tables uh, describe all the anal analytical character characteristics of these assays. They have published it in CCLM and it is, uh, these tables are also available on the IFCC website. Uh, the characteristics that they describe here are the low level limit of uh, blank limit of detection uh, percent CV at the 99th percentile and also concentration levels of for 20 percent CV and 10 percent CV. Uh, they uh, describe also the 99th uh, percentile overall for overall and also for sex specific uh, 99th percentile limits as well as a specimen type and so on other characteristics. But here you see also that the poor status of harmonization or standardization for troponin assays uh, lead to the fact that assay-specific rule-out rule in diagnostic algorithms has to be used. This is a table of a contemporary cardiac troponin ion tro troponin as, uh, as T assay uh, analytical characteristics. And here you see also that uh, same thing, that there is a lack of standardization. There are differences it's the 99th percentile levels uh, described by manufacturers. And here are also the same characteristics described as in the, in the high sensitive methods. And these have also been published and these are available on the IFCC website. And similar tables of all the analytical characteristics has been also uh, compiled for uh, natriuretic peptides and, and Similar process has taken, uh, all the manufacturers provide this information. There are similar uh, characteristics like uh, limit of detection and CV percents and upper reference limits and so on that have been described. And also specimen type and capture antibody 
and a detection antibody have been described in these cases. And here you see also that there is a lack of standardization. There are differences between the manufacturers for what they uh, dis uh, describe uh, for decision limits or upper reference limit. Another issue is uh, we as uh, laboratory professionals need to remember are the interfering uh, facts that uh, we cannot forget e ever. Hemolysis is one of the most common uh, interfering factors and uh, this same group has uh, compiled all the information from the manufacturers describing all the, uh, all the interfering uh, data that they have studied. Uh, especially in the case of hemolysis, it is important that the clinicians know what kind of impact the hemolysis has on the assay and, and interpretation of the result because in many cases uh, the samples are taken in the emergency settings where the uh, samples are very often hemolyzed. Uh, manufacturers have studied uh, effect of hemolysis in the to a certain level and then if you want to study it further, laboratories need to study it uh, themselves. A new interfering factor that has uh, come up uh, lately is the biotin and uh, it has a great impact on, on in cases where the people take uh, massive amounts of biotin supplements. Other, uh, manif many uh, manufacturers have uh, used streptavidin biotin in the, in the assay structures and others do not have this, uh, this issue at all. But clinicians should be aware that if a patient has taken biotin, uh, so that what kind of impact it should have in the uh, result and interpretation of the result. There are similar tables for natriuretic peptide assays also, uh, effect of hemolysis and, and biotin are described in this table that is available on the IFCC website. Uh, American Association of Clinical Chemistry and Task Force on, on IFCC Task Force on Clinical Application of Cardi Cardiac Markers has published recently uh, recommendations uh, for clinical laboratory practice when measuring troponin um, met methods in, in acute myocardial infarction. The first recommendation says that uh, laboratories should measure three levels of uh, concentrations of uh, uh, quality control mater material at least once a day. They also recommend that uh, laboratories should validate the low limit of uh, blank and limit of detection. And laboratories, laboratories should report high sensitive troponin in whole numbers uh, using nanogram liter. And laboratories should use defined reference pop population to report 99th percentile concentration uh, uh, um, according to sex specific cutoffs for high sensitive troponin assays. Laboratories also uh, should uh, be aware that the, uh, their methods, uh, at, at the methods that the concentration levels that are at or above the limit of detection uh, should detect at least 50% of healthy men and women. Uh, and, and if it, they do not that, that, then the methods should be labeled as contemporary assays. Laboratories should also communicate with clinicians uh, in, in the pre-analytical and analytical issues of all the methods that they are using for m cardiac markers. And authors of studies using cardiac markers, including all these uh, especially high sensitive troponin assays, should document the, all the pre-analytical and analytical issues uh, that are important to the study in their reports. Commutable materials should be developed for harmonizing or standardizing the troponin methods. And uh, they recommend that the <coughs> laboratories should report uh, all the results within 60 minutes after the reception of the uh, uh, sample in the lab. And finally, the recommendation 10 says that laboratories should help educate clinicians on the importance of specific metrics by which 
true clinical changes in troponin uh, concentrations can be distinguished from analytical and biological variabilities. EFL has a, a task group on cardiac markers and uh, here's the list of members and they come from European countries and last year we invited uh, two members uh, from uh, uh, US to join us and they are also members of the IFCC uh, committee of, of cardiac biomarkers. We have performed surveys on the use and implementation of cardiac markers in Europe and in a 2013 survey, US and Canada were included in these studies. The ways we have used uh, to invite uh, people to join, uh, join the uh, surveys and answer the questionnaires, we have used uh, EFL mass mailing, we have used National Society mail, ma lists, mailing lists, we previously used uh, EQA providers and uh, actually the personal contacts have been the best way to get responses. First survey as a preliminary survey was performed in 2006 and the next surveys we have performed have been uh, in 2010, 2013 and actually at the moment we have a final survey or the latest survey ongoing and here you see the uh, address to the website that link is available for responses at least till the end of August. So I will encourage and invite you all to join and give your answers to, to this um, survey, which is important to get information how the uh, uh, cardiac markers are used and how the guidelines are implemented. It is a very ambitious survey, so please take your time <laughs> to give your responses. And the aim of these surveys is to document and present uh, the present situation of the use and implementation of cardiac markers of uh, acute coronary syndrome and heart failure in Euro European countries and uh, as well as US and Canada. And there, are, there is in the survey, there's a list of countries, but there's also a blank box. So if you are not included in the list, then you can uh, name your own country there. We have uh, had in the uh, surveys, we have had responses from about 35 to 40 countries and uh, about uh, 300 to 400 responses. And mainly the responders come from university, central and district hospitals. Now you see the first glimpses of the ongoing survey we have received about 440 responses up till the beginning of May. So uh, it would be great to have much, much more responses uh, for this new survey. And you see still the uh, university hospitals and central hospitals are the ma main re responders. In the previous surveys, we asked if the troponin is the preferred marker you see here that the troponin was the preferred marker uh, in US and, and uh, Europe, in no North America and Europe, uh, but also other markers were used a lot in the 2013 survey. And in the other, in, in figure one actually, you see that the uh, other markers have been used, but the trend has been getting lower, but the markers are still used. And what's the situation in, in, in 2019 is that we asked uh, if you use troponin as the first line test for ACS, and out of about 400 responses, 300 say that troponin is the first line test, and a few say that no. Then, uh, most of the responses use high sensitive troponin assays and in Europe especially troponin D is the predominant method but, uh, but uh, troponin I is also at about the same level. We also asked which other markers you use uh, for the suspected 
acute coronary syndrome. And you see here that a lot of other markers are still used, which is against the international guideline. We also asked uh, which is the cutoff limit or decision limit that is used. And uh, as you see here that in the previous surveys, the 99th percentile has been the main source of a dete uh, detection limit. And the use of 99th percentile has increased over the years. And there is not dramatic difference between uh, North America and Europe in, the, uh, in this respect. We also asked that what is the main source of information where they get these decision limits from. And in the previous studies, package insert was the main source of information. And also in the newest uh, survey shows that the manufacturers kit inserts are the main source for information for laboratories. So this puts a great responsibility on manufacturers uh, that they have to be aware of the guidelines and, and, and uh, and respect them. We also asked uh, if the laboratories have protocols with clinicians. We first asked this in the 2013 survey, and it seems that there was a, a lot of uh, laboratories that didn't have uh, any uh, agreement with clinicians. A few had written protocols, some had informal consensus, and other had verbal agreement. In the recent survey, it seems that out of about 400 responses, 120 have written protocol for clinical use of troponin measurements. But also almost as many say that they don't have a written protocol. Natriuretic peptides were also included in these uh, surveys and, and in the uh, table two you see that uh, there's a list of guidelines that have been developed over the years and it, uh, uh, decision limits, cutoff points for both natriuretic peptides, BNP and NT, pro BNP. And in the uh, figure one, you see that uh, what decision limits have laboratories have used. Uh, you see that the guideline recommended cutoff values have not been implemented adequately in practice, which is likely to lead dis to discrepancies in diagnosis and treatment of heart failure. In the recent uh, survey, we asked about the rule out protocol for natriuretic peptides. And uh, many laboratories say that there is no rule out protocol for natriuretic peptides, and less say that there is. And the source where they get this rule out protocol is uh, mainly ESC guideline or the National Society uh, guidelines. Then what is the single cutoff value for rule out acute heart failure? Uh, do you use that is the question and uh, about 100 laboratories have a single cutoff value and about 80 or 60 have uh, don't have. And what are the actual, actual numbers? You see here that there are variable uh, answers, responses, what the laboratories are using. The same question for rule in acute heart failure, and there are laboratories, uh, about 110 laboratories say there is no single cutoff value for rule in acute heart failure, and very few say that there is one. And you see again that uh, numbers that they give for a uh, single cutoff value are very different. We also asked about the written protocol. Do you have a, s a single written protocol for the clinical use of natriuretic peptide measurements? And about 100 say that uh, they don't have, and about 60 say that they do have written protocol. But I see that there are a lot of empties also. What does this empty mean? Are the laboratories aware of these things or, or do they do not care or what this means? It would be interesting to know because in, in most of the questions 
empty is the biggest uh, bar that you see. In the uh, first slides, I uh, had information about the new markers that have been studied intensively, and we also wanted to ask a question if the laboratories measure these new ma uh, markers in clinical routine. So we asked, do you measure mid-region uh, pro A and B, and only four out of 440 laboratories measure this new marker. So what is the take-home message after this presentation? Uh, there's a need for new and more specific markers for AMI, and it seems that there might be possibilities to have a new more specific methods uh, under development. There are a lot of studies of the new markers of heart failure, but the search for more specific markers still continues, and uh, uh, con uh, uh, the present markers that are used or under study need further uh, studies also. Need for standardization and harmonization of all these methods is crucial and, and evident. But for lab us laboratorians, the knowledge of guidelines among laboratory professionals can be improved, as you see that there, we are not aware of these guidelines. And if we are aware of these guidelines, the adherence to guidelines among laboratory uh, professionals can be improved dramatically. And again, here you see the website, so please go to this link and give your answers if you have not done so. Thank you.